Happy New Year. It's 2020. How exciting. Let's start the new year right. Break up with what no longer serves you and elevate into better dating. It's time to make space for a higher quality of life. And that starts with taking out the trash. First up, let's toss out old ideas of what dating looks like. Yes, there are dating pools and dating calibers, but I'm going to teach you how to move up into high value dating. High value women are looking to date high value men, but high value dating plays by its own rules. It's kind of like its own secret dating club. No one teaches you this, but if you know, then you're in. So here's your first secret. Dating gender norms are the basis of high value dating. Dating gender norms have fallen into a gray area with the progression of old fashioned traditions converging with feminist ideals. Society's moving forward and Dating's just kind of being dragged along. No one's shaping the future of this. While women's roles in the workplace were redefined, the conversation discussing the evolution of dating norms never happened. In other words, dating traditions that clearly stated men and women's roles on a date are now anxiety-inducing moments leading you to questions like, who makes the first move? Who pays for drinks? And do we just meet there? Women's rights are insanely important to me, but when it comes to dating, let me be the first person to tell you, do not, I repeat, do not interfere with traditional gender dating norms. Guys, if you don't know what I mean when I'm saying gender dating norms, I'm referring to which gender, male or female, should be taking charge in each of these situations. In today's episode, I discuss gender norms and answer two popular dating questions. You ready? Here we go. Welcome to the first episode of Dating Hotline, presented by Anne Swipe Right, the dating consultancy setting the standard in online dating. This is your host, Chloe Miller, and I am so, so, so excited that you guys are joining me on this journey through online dating. This will be so much fun. You know, dating is all about trial and error, but I think it would be better for everyone if there were some helpful tips along the way. So I'm sharing some of the most popular questions with you that need to be addressed. Let's clear the air. I'll tell you my opinion, but I'm also curious to hear what you think. So DM me, let me know your thoughts. Dating hotline, question number one. When it comes to the first move, who makes it? Digitally and IRL. Okay, this is my advice for brand new relationships. This is obviously a completely different move when you were seeing someone, but if this is a stranger and you want to meet this person, like if you are actually seeing this person in real life with your eyeballs, not through a phone screen, both men and women can walk up and make the first move. As a woman, I love being approached by a good looking man. It is the best compliment and it just makes my day. But I also have no problem walking up to a good looking man and being like, Hello, I'm Chloe. Let's meet. I like seeing women make the first move. Walking up and starting a conversation is attractive, and that confidence is so sexy. In fact, I actually hear from a lot of my male clients that they would prefer to meet someone in real life that would enjoy being approached by an attractive woman who thinks he's the most good-looking man that she's seen, and she wants to make him hers. Guys, here's a secret. Everyone, male or female, Everyone wants to be desired and wants to feel chosen. Remember that. It's a powerful tool. But when we're talking about dating profiles, matching, and who makes the first move online, it should be the guy. I know people will disagree with that statement with one simple word, Bumble. And to those people, 
I argue back that Bumble is a dating app that is good in theory, but the execution of the woman initiating the conversation online is actually terrible. And it's the antithesis of a high-value woman. Dating is a cat-mouse game, always revolving around the chase. Dating gender norms are the rules we play by, and the rules are based upon human nature. When these rules are changed, how do you sustain the chase? When women make the first move online, it's ten times harder to regain your power in the relationship dynamic. From the beginning of the relationship, the dating norms are already out of place, and the early relationship days are when the relationship precedents are set, a crucial time to show up the right way. In traditional real-life dating, men make the first move, and that's for a reason. You've caught his attention, he's interested, and then the chase starts. The chase is a game of chess moves, and each time a person moves, the power shifts between the couple. Who takes the upper hand? Online, it should be the same way. He likes your profile, so he should have something to say to start the conversation. However, when the opposite happens and a woman initiates the conversation online, it flips the cat-mouse dynamic as the woman is now chasing the man. And the second a man feels like she's more interested in him than he is in her, he will move on to a different challenge, aka a new woman. Ladies, this is how we get hung up on guys who leave us on red. We get over our ski tips in our relationship investment and we start chasing him. A high-value woman never chases. She attracts. How does she do this? By staying in her feminine lane and allowing him to court her. When a woman starts the conversation online, she's flipping the roles and courting him. Relationships that start off this way can be tricky to balance out later. The key here is to recognize that online, a woman starting the conversation on a dating app is taking the relationship planning responsibilities which, for the first date, is traditionally a masculine role. But when you're online, the only way to create the chase is through text. And we all know how many different ways there are to interpret the same sentence. Without the assistance of in-real-life factors supporting the yay, nay, vote in your head, your interest in this person comes down to what they say. It's a much smaller framework to build desire from, and it's best to stick to traditional norms, letting men take charge to plan the first date. This sets you up for your best chances of building chemistry. Plus, this helps to eliminate wasted time on unrequited love. Some people out there have no problem letting you love them more than they love you. Don't fall victim to their traps. Okay, so what's the takeaway with question one? Who makes the first move? In real life, men and women can make the first move. And online... Men only. Why? Because a high-value man chases a high-value woman, not the other way around. We want to keep the chase alive as long as possible. Dating hotline question number two. Who pays for the first date? If you're looking for a high value woman and you define yourself as a high value man, a first date is your opportunity to impress each other. And guys, you should pick up the tab. Here's why. You are taking her out and asking her to join you for your plans. She's your guest for the evening. Picking up the tab, regardless of the price, is still a flattering move. Don't worry, she'll notice. If this doesn't sit well, then let me ask you a couple of questions and you tell me what you think. First, who's hosting the date? If you can't answer that question, then let me try this one. Who set up the date? Then they are the host. And if you are the host, then you are responsible for setting up the plans, making a reservation, confirming the plans with your date, and then picking up the tab at the end of the evening. With great power comes great responsibility. But furthermore, if you're in charge of setting up the date, plan a date that you know you can't afford and you won't feel annoyed or irritated if there isn't a second date. Remember, a first date is a gamble 
Invest only what you're okay with losing. For each person, that will be different. Maybe that's a couple cocktails, or maybe that's dinner and a show. If you plan a date that was over budget and you're not vibing, don't let that show. It's one of the biggest turnoffs when a guy expresses financial frustration from the date while still on the date. When you do this, you're basically telling your date that she's not worth the money you're spending. Lovely, right? So here's how I covertly test for those financially frustrating red flags. Usually my dates involve some cocktails or coffee or something like that. So after about one or two, I'll order another drink, but only have one sip. I purposefully do not finish this drink. Then I wait to see his reaction. This is not about having too many cocktails, but rather this is about figuring out his relationship with money. The same can be done with a muffin or a croissant if this is a day date. The trick is to not finish the item. Some guys have said, are you going to finish that? And when I responded no, they take it and drink it themselves. Others have asked me why I ordered a drink if I wasn't going to drink it. And I've even been told, well, that was a waste of money. So you can see how these men talked their way out of a second date. But for me, that's a non-negotiable. A second date wouldn't be worth either of our time. Also, bro, if buying me a cocktail is a waste of money, my time with you is a waste of time. Bye. But seriously, there are very real reasons why I do this. I once dated a man who was financially controlling, and even though the income flow changed over time, his control did not. When these red flags present themselves, even if they are small in size, they grow into much larger issues down the road. So I created this little test to filter out men who are not a part of my future. Also, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did, so avoid controlling partners. It only gets more complicated as your relationship grows. Ladies, start checking for financially controlling habits, but do be considerate of the price point. Not finishing a cocktail is not the same as ordering a second entree. Keep your measurement in check. And guys, what I'm looking for in those not finished cocktails are for you to not say a word about how your money is being enjoyed. You committed to an evening out with this woman. Don't make her feel bad and mansplain how you would live her life. Let her make her own decisions and part of that includes deciding what not to do, like finish a cocktail. My partner won't care if I finish the drink or not. He'll be more interested in spending time with me than paying attention to how his money is being spent. The comments I receive from each one of those guys is a major red flag. If you want to pass the first date test, be more aware of your comments and think about how they would be received and more importantly, just let her do her thing. Okay, so what's the takeaway in question two? If he's taking you out, he's paying for the evening. This does not obligate women to anything more than replying yes or no to the question of a second date. But at the same time, guys, the first date doesn't have to be lavish or expensive. Save that for date two or three when you know it's worth it. Okay, it's time for this week's successes and failures in dating. Dating highlights. First up, I want to say highlight of this week was absolutely getting all the love and support for Dating Hotline. You guys are amazing and reading your emails and your messages and everything is just in your text messages. It's just been so wonderful. Like you guys are so supportive. I'm so grateful for you. Also, seeing how many of you slid into my DMs after I mentioned I was recently single. You guys know how to make a girl feel loved. Dating crashes. Okay, so I still kind of feel bad about this one. And for every guy out there, please take my apology to heart. Heal all the wounds you carry from the women who have ever done this to you in your life. I was at a coffee shop waiting to meet someone. And while I was waiting for them, this man came over and introduced himself. I was distracted, caught off guard, so we chatted for a minute. He tried to ask for my number, but I felt like he was a little pushy and I didn't feel comfortable giving this stranger my number, so instead, I gave him my Instagram handle. 
Now, guys, if a woman gives you her Instagram handle, this is not rejection. This is just another challenge she's set up for you to meet her at. If you think she's worth it, you'll do it. But when I told this guy that he could follow me on Instagram, his energy completely shifted to an annoyed place, and he didn't even look at me when he said goodbye. Maybe he interpreted my response as rejection, which is why I want to clear this up. If you ask for a girl's number and she doesn't give it to you, but she offers another form of communication, meet her where she's at. Okay, that's our show. Thank you for tuning to Dating Hotline, presented by Anne Swipe Right, a dating consultancy setting the standard in online dating. This is your host, Chloe Miller. You guys DM me your dating questions, send me your thoughts, and please, please, please tell all of your friends to listen. We are on iTunes. We are on Spotify. Go check us out. This podcast is presented by Anne Swipe Right, a personal consultant agency setting the standard in online dating. Visit their website, www.andswiperight.com, to learn more about their personal styling appointments, private coaching sessions, and the creative, engaging dating profiles that they make for single men and women. Dating Hotline is hosted by Chloe Miller, founder and CEO of Anne Swipe Right. Follow her on Instagram, at Mill. C-H-L-O-M-I-L-L. You guys, we love hearing from you, so please, please, please send us your fan mail to datinghotline at answewipebright.com. That's datinghotline, D-A-T-I-N-G-H-O-T-L-I-N-E at answewipebright.com. And follow us on social media, you guys, at answewipebright.com and at Dating Hotline Podcast. But don't worry, guys. We'll put it all in the show notes on the Anne Swipe Right website. Check it out there. Last thing, you guys, please subscribe to our podcast. Leave us a review on iTunes and tell all of your friends. This is the Dating Hotline. Mm-hmm.